Hello everybody, this is Stefano from SAP. What we'll be doing today is we'll be creating an Angular application and we'll be importing the fundamental NGX library within our application. First thing we need to do is we will go inside the desired folder. So in my case, we'll go into Documents, then Work, then Perfect. So once you're in that folder, what you're going to do is you're going to type in ng new and then the name of the app. So we'll call it my app. Be sure to have Node.js and the Angular CLI installed before you do so. So then we will say what type of styling we want. This installation process takes about 30 seconds to a minute and a half. So we'll go ahead. We'll wait for that to get installed and for it to generate all the files we need. And then we will import the fundamental NGX library. Perfect, so it's created our application for us. We can just go into it. So we'll go into the folder. And as you see, those are all the files that come with it. What we'll do next is we'll add the whole, we'll import the library and we'll add it to our application by typing ng add, the add sign, and then we'll write fundamental ngx slash core. So that's gonna import all of the modules needed and all of the libraries needed for us to use the fundamental and GX library within our own modules and within our app. So yes, yeah, sure, we could add an animations, why not? All right, perfect. So now that that's been added, we could go into our file and open it up in VS Code by simply typing code dot. Uh, you might need to add in the installer so that you could type that in and it opens it up normally. So next thing, we'll go into the source app folder. We're going to go in the app.module.ts file. So this is going to be simply because we have one very small application. We only has, have one app module TS file. If you have several module TS files, it's usually the case for bigger, bigger applications. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll import what we need to import here. And this is where you're going to import any necessarily necessary files you'll use throughout your application. So for us, what we'll do is we'll import simply one component to begin. Um, so you could go either component by component, um, module by module, by importing them. So what you'll do is you'll write down the name of the module, then you'll write from, and then you'll say the desired path. So in our case, it's at fundamental ngx core. So at this point, it tells us in case Angular wants to use a toggle module, this is the path. To actually import it, just add it to the imports array. So that's to do them one by one. If you want, you could also add the whole fundamental NGX core library. And then once again, if you want to use it, just add it to the imports array. But since we're only going to use the toggle module, just keep it like so, not use any code that's not necessary. All right, so now that that's been put, this is going to be the default application. So I'll go ahead, I'll type in ng serve. What that does is that's going to create the application on a local host. So I'll let that compile. What you will need to know is I'll just go ahead and what we'll do is we'll delete this. I'll just wait for it to show you the default Angular application. Delete everything except the router outlet. This is going to be shown later when talking about Angular routing, uh, which will be discussed in future videos. So just give it a couple seconds. Perfect. It's been successfully compiled. So now if you go into the app, this is the default page. So we don't want that. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead, we'll go back here. We'll delete all of this. Perfect. And we'll add in a toggle element. So anything in the fundamentals package usually will be done with an FD for their selectors. So then after that, we're going to put in the size. So this is the desired size. Uh, in our case, I'll say, let's say we want a large. The last thing you'll want to do is you'll want to use two way binding, which will also be discussed in later videos. And we'll put in the checked here, and then we will assign it to a value. So this value, the reason we're doing this is because we will want to be able to locally store this value. As you see, it gives an error. The reason for that is because in our component, in our app component, or the component that's using this FD toggle, you will need to use 
the value of my value in our case and you'll need to set it to something this way anytime it's going to be used in the actual application by the user it'll be rendered and it'll be set to my value that's going to be in the component in the corresponding component then if you go back here as you'll see this is going to be error free and then we can go ahead and check out the new one so this is what it looks like so this is just our default one with a toggle element so i do want to thank you guys for watching just pay attention for future videos you'll see we'll go over modules and routing